Greetings, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. We're doing Enoch chapter 1. But before we do, I wanted to take a quick look at Enoch from the Bible before we read of the book of Enoch, the R.H. Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S translation. So let's take a look. In Genesis 4.17, we read that uh, Cain had a son and named his son Enoch. Okay, so there's two Enochs in the Bible, one from the line of Cain and the other from the line of Seth. Now, I looked this up in uh, Strong's Concordance, the name Enoch. Now, you got to remember, there are two Enochs in the Bible, the line of Cain and the line of Seth. So, sometimes the word might apply to one and not the other. So, keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Hebrew word for, uh, 2441. In the, sense, in the sense of tasting properly, the palate or inside of the mouth uh, as an organ of speech, taste, kissing. Okay, speech. All right, keep that in mind. Um, it could also mean initiated, practiced, or trained, as in, you know, training. Uh, discipline, dedicate, consecrate, dedication, dedicating, uh, to be narrow, to throttle, to choke oneself to death by a rope, hang or self or strangle. Hmm. Very interesting, if you ask me. So let's take a look at it in the Greek. Uh, it means the same thing. Okay. So let's take a look at the places where Enoch is in the Bible. Uh, let's see. In a lot of Cain's lineage, names match the same names as those of the line of Seth. And I did a couple of videos on all the names in the uh, Old Testament that I know of have some sort of meaning to them, which I find very interesting. And if you take those names and their meanings and go chronologically from the oldest at the top and then the youngest at the bottom and read them it gives you a story somebody pointed that out to me and uh, i did a video on it too so in genesis 5 we read 519 and jared lived after he begat enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. Verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. So Wow, 300 years, right? Genesis 5, 23. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. 365. Huh. How many days are in a year? 365. Is there a connection there? I don't know. 
probably is, but, you know, beyond my understanding. And then in verse 24, Genesis 5, 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. God took him where? Well, not on this earth. God took him. Do you know there's only two recorded instances of people that never died in the Bible? One of them was Enoch. The other one was Elijah. And Elijah is going to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. I'm, uh, and that's recorded in... Ooh, I forget. I'll have to look it up. I'm getting old, guys, gals. Sometimes the memory's not what it used to be. Okay, it's in the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 5. And uh, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So, Malachi tells us that uh, the Lord's going to send us Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. When the Lord comes back, it's going to be a great day for believers, but it's going to be a dreadful day for those that are not in Christ. All right, so let's take a look where Elijah was taken. Now, I did an entire Bible study, one hour and 40 minutes. I cover the entire life of Elijah, prophecies, and if you're interested, let me know. I will... Uh, you can listen to it. I go through a lot of the book of the, uh, the Kings. Elijah was able to call down fire from heaven. And you can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 1. Well, guess what? The Antichrist, or the false prophet, I should say, is going to be able to mimic the same miracles and that's in that elijah video matter of fact i think the false prophet is going to claim to be elijah and try to get people to follow him that's my guess you know they're say oh elijah's come and try to get us to believe that the antichrist is the true messiah They'll probably tell us that Jesus was a false messiah, but uh, yeah, that's my guess. Hmm. In 2 Kings 2 and verse 1, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal and then in 2 Kings 2.11 and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder, uh, you know, Elijah and his uh, right-hand man, Elisha. And parted them asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind, by a whirlwind into heaven. So, God took Enoch, God took Elijah. They're the only two people in the history of the Bible that I know of that never died. So, with that in mind, let's read about from 
Charles's translation of the book of Enoch. Chapter 1. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be living in the day of tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble. When all the wicked and godless are to be removed. That sounds like... Uh, yeah, the coming of the Lord, right? And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. So a remote generation. In Enoch's time, you're talking, you know, a long time ago. You got to realize, Elijah walked the earth um, close to 6,000 years ago, well over 5,000. I, you know, so would uh, five, six thousand years later be a remote generation? Oh, yeah. But not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them. The Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth even on Mount Sinai and appear from his camp and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens and shall and all shall be smitten with fear and the watchers shall quake little note here uh, the watchers in Enoch refers to the angels that were watching over the earth, watching mankind. And great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth, and the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. Let's stop right here real quick. And we're going to take a look at the Bible, what the Bible says about this right here. All right, what does the Bible say about uh, shaken? The high mountains shall be shaken. Well, Revelation 11, 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Revelation 16, 18, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. Revelation 6, 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And this uh, black and blood is out of the book of Joel. Revelation 8, 5, And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So there, let's see, what else? Revelation 19, I'm sorry, Revelation 11, 19. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in the temple 
the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail all right let's read uh revelation 16 verse 17 and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine, of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. Every island fled away. Yeah, you know, like, you know, the, the legend of Atlantis just, you know, gone, right? And the mountains were not found. How are the mountains not found? Well, the earthquake leveled them i guess you know that's what it sounds like to me uh and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent uh talents about 70 pounds people or about 30 kilograms and men blasphemed god because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was exceeding great all right so we just read in enoch it says and the high mountains shall be shaken and the high hills shall be made low and shall melt like wax before the flame where do we read about that oh that's an easy one second peter second peter chapter three let's see verse six. Oh, by the way there's people will tell you that second peter is a fake Bible book. Yeah. Uh, those are the people that deny Paul being a, a, a an apostle called of God. So, Second Peter verse three, uh, chapter three and verse six. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. You know, the flood of Noah, right? But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men what does perdition means it means to fall uh judas iscariot who betrayed jesus was called the son of perdition so is a false prophet in the end times but verse 8 but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing what does it mean to be ignorant means you don't know something so he tells you don't be ignorant don't you know i'm going to explain something to you you don't know it but i'm going to tell you yeah when it comes to brain surgery i'm ignorant oh yeah big time uh calculus mathematics ignorant that's me but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So people will, uh, you know, in the Bible, the Bible will say, like in Revelation, that uh, these prophecies will shortly come to pass. Well, yeah, to the Lord, it's like a day or two. That's shortly come to pass, right? But... Uh, is the Bible written from the Lord's perspective or our perspective? Sometimes it's ours. Sometimes it's the Lord's. You know? Yeah, Lord's going to come back in a day or two. Well, that's a couple thousand years, right? Something to consider. Um, somebody did a really in-depth genealogy thing. Um, all the people that died and how long they lived and what have you and how many generations and the best that they could come up with is they said that the bible is approximately uh the earth earth is approximately six thousand years old okay didn't the lord say six days you work and then on the seventh is the sabbath okay 
Well, if a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day, 6,000 years, and then the seventh thousand, well, the, the seventh day, which is a thousand years, would be the time of rest, the Sabbath of rest. Perhaps that is when the Bible talks about the thousand year millennium when Christ rules and Satan is bound for the thousand years. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read your Bible. Turn your television off and read the Bible. I mean, seriously, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm trying to do the book of uh, Enoch, not give you an entire Bible study. But there's going to be a thousand years of rest. And the thousand years is in Revelation 20. I'm going to read it real quick. Verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the thousand years is just the introduction to the kingdom, people. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Hmm, okay, so let's go back to 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering do usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's just like the book of Enoch says, right? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Hmm. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, let's go back to Enoch. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder. And all that is upon the earth shall perish. And there shall be a judgment upon all men. Now we just read in Enoch that uh, those on the earth are going to be destroyed pretty much, right? Well, what about believers? I, what's up with that? Are they going to be destroyed? No, I don't think so. Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. There you go. Paul doesn't want us to be ignorant. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, amen, I believe that, 
Even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The dead in Christ are going to be coming with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. See, there's going to be a certain group of people that are going to be alive when Christ returns. And we're not going to be able to pre prevent those, if we're part of that group, uh, we're not going to be able to prevent those that are dead from coming with Christ. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture. No. No, no, no. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, a shout. Yeah, every pre-trib secret rapture has a shout, right? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Yeah, everybody blows a, a trumpet or a horn for a secret rapture, right? Do, do, do. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let's read that again. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, caught up together with them in the clouds. We're not going to be on the earth. We're going to be in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air when he's coming down. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. People, if you're not caught up in the clouds, it's the wrong Messiah. And the Bible clearly teaches that the false Christ, the false Messiah, the Antichrist, comes first. But you would never know it going to listen to these pre-trib rapture churches. Let's go back to the book of Enoch. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish. That's right. All that are on the earth will perish, because we ain't going to be on the earth. We're going to be up in the clouds with, with Christ and glory. And there shall be our judgment upon all men. Yeah, there is going to be judgment. Um, Christians are going to be judged. The wicked are going to get wrath. They're going to be judged too, but they're going to get wrath. But with the righteous, he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them. And they shall all belong to God and they shall be prospered and they shall all be blessed. And he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them. And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And this, uh, and behold, he cometh with 10,000 of his holy ones. Um, that's in the book of Jude. That is a direct, direct quote from, well, either the book of Enoch either took that from Jude or Jude took it from Enoch. Take your pick, because I'm not 100% sure either way. All right, in the book of Jude, uh, Jude chapter 1, verse 14. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam, he was the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince 
all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him hmm maybe we should read the entire book of uh, Jude huh so let's go back and read Jude Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Now don't uh, quote me on this, but I think Jude, brother of James, had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Yeah, grew up with Jesus. I think so. I'm not 100% sure and I don't want to take the time to actually look it up but I, it's what i suspect verse 2 mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied beloved when i gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints and i hope i'm doing that Exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Yep, there are evil people that crept in who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You know what? There's people that will tell you that the grace of God turns uh, because the law was nailed to the cross that grace becomes a license to sin. And that's what he's talking about here. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, Mormons deny Jesus. Well, they sort of kind of believe in him, but uh, they don't believe in the God of the Bible. They don't believe in the Christ of the Bible. They believe in the Mormon Christ. So, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance that ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That's in the book of Exodus. Listen to this. Listen to this. People will say, oh, angels can't have sex. Angels, no. You're reading from the book of Enoch. Well, I don't do that with my uh, Genesis chapter 6. I never quote Enoch, not once. Listen to this. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh what was uh, Jude talking about here and the angels, which kept not their first estate. And then he compares them in verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. And yes, they could be talking about sodomy, but, you know, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Isn't that what angel kind and humankind would be doing? Yeah. They despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. We're talking about the angels here, right? 
Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. Um, this is, you know, Cain was a murderer. Balaam was a true prophet of the Lord that wanted the reward riches more than he wanted the Lord. And Cory was, uh, he was the one that opposed Moses and wanted to bring glory upon himself. Verse 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit, twice dead. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What do you mean twice dead? Dead physically, dead spiritually. When you read about Babylon has fallen, has fallen in Revelation, it was fallen physically and it was fallen spiritually. Twice dead. Verse 13, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars wandering stars read job 38 where they're called the sons of god are likened unto wandering uh, uh, stars well they're likened unto stars think about it people wandering stars to whom is reserved the darkness of blood uh, the blackness of darkness forever and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. You ever admired people because they were born into money? You know, they get into Harvard. They get into Yale. Not me. I went to the junior college. Yeah, community college. Or whatever they call it now. I wasn't born into advantage, trust me. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers, mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Are we in the last time? God knows. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. You don't have to separate yourselves from them. They'll separate themselves from you. You know? Hey, we're going to the bar to get drunk. Now, that's not a place for a Christian, if you ask me. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, Amen. So we just read Jude, and we just read the book of Enoch, chapter 1. So let's close this out. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.